Yeah, we still got people. Hello. So this is one of the most uh, traveled weekends of the year. And in the last class, a few of you actually wrote and uh, messaged me, are we going to switch the class? Mm -hmm. because, um, obviously, we're on a vacation. It's one of the last big holidays or three-day weekends for the summer. So it's typically um, when people go and uh, have their last vacation of the summer. So um, we may be shy. <laughs> a few people. I was hoping... Sitha would be back. Um, I think she's still traveling, and I have been paying attention to the weather in India, and I think it's a monsoon season right now, and so there's been flooding and things like that, so I've, I've been praying for her, uh, her safe return. I haven't heard from her. She's kind of needed right now, because I, I know there's a couple of you that are having uh, issues with... Um, is that you, Jeremy? Is that you that are having issues with uh, Taurus Soft or something? Well, both I'm having issues with both of them, I think. Um, when I first opened Taurus Soft, it was asking for a registration code. And... Yeah, you don't need that. You don't need that. You just hit, you just just keep, you just. Uh, um... Okay, well, and, and then when I closed, when I went to close it down, it just opened up the screen for me, for the, the, yeah. the main um, search screen that you start off with. Right, that's where you're supposed to go. Yeah, yeah, and so, so I oh, and then that just happened just a, a minute ago. Yeah, um, yeah. code so finder, uh, code finder. Um, I when I go to click on the website where it says to download it, pay and download it, mm -hmm. the PayPal website comes up and says, uh, "Sorry, something went wrong. Try again later." Okay, all right. And on on the code finder, let's hold off until. Um, uh, Sita is back. We can address that. But it sounds yeah. like your Taurus off is good to go. Yeah, it sounds that way. Yep. All right. So so with that little prompt that comes up, every time you guys open Taurus off up, it's going to have that come up. And you just hit it. And you'll see on there, every mm -hmm. time you do, there's a, like a countdown to when it's going to re-up. And it's and when it, when that code program originally came out, you, there was, you were supposed, they would email you a code that you would redeem in that little yeah. section. That website was hacked by a Muslim in, I want to say, like uh, 1999, 90, around 2000, somewhere around there, uh, maybe a little bit further, some, something like that, maybe a little further on. And that never mattered from that point on. The, you, you know, it just became like an open source co uh, code program. So don't worry about that. Um, just you know, hit enter or whatever it, it, it asks you. It'll bring you to the to your screen, and that's where where you need to start uh, searching code. So if if it does that, um, you, it sounds like you're good to go. What we need to do is test if and see if you you could go back and watch one of the the videos we already done. Find a, a code that you can do, and mimic everything that we we do in the in the video and and on your um, Taurus alt. Right, you follow that, me? That's that's what I was hoping to do this this afternoon, and I was watching those previous videos. I was going back to I think May when okay. you were first getting into the Taurus Very thing, good. and just to kind of I was going through it, brushing up because those that's those were the that's when I stopped being able to attend. That's when all my tech died, and I had to everything was dead, and I couldn't get onto anything. Um, yeah. And by the way, it's good to have so, you back, Jeremy. Thank you. I'm glad to be back. Um, <laughs> So it sounds like you're right there, brother. Yeah. You, 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 your program's running. You just need to do some some um, practical application, right? And go through the process. Watch some of the videos over and over. Stop the videos. Watch what I'm doing there. And, um, and I'll, I'll and be doing that right after class tonight. So, very yeah. good. Very yeah. good. And, and you know, you can always message me and, and, and things like that if you got issues. <laughs> and uh, we'll go through it. Yeah. How's everybody else doing? Good to see you, Marty, here, sister. Yeah. Thank you, Jonathan. Yeah, so I was hoping Paul and um, Sitha would be back. Uh, uh, I guess they're still traveling. I did see Sitha and Paul pop up on Discord, and I think they were just probably on their phone checking and seeing what was going on. Um, and uh, But I haven't seen them anywhere else, so we're still praying for them for their travel. Anybody here got codes tonight that they want to share before we get into what we're going to do? You guys working on anything? Anything you want to share? 
Um, we can wait till the end at, at toward the end of the class. I only have five uh, vocabulary words for you guys tonight. We're gonna we're gonna increase the number of letters. So we're gonna have some words that are four letters and five letters in this, but it's only five, and uh, that, that's all it is. And then I got a, a a short presentation from Greg Braden that he put out on the Bible codes that I thought was really interesting. And uh, I want to watch that with you guys, and then um, we'll we'll either do some codes together or or look at some codes that you guys are working on. Uh, I won't keep you too late um, tonight, and uh, we'll go from there. Any questions? I've still got people coming in. Welcome, Leslie. <laughs> All right, let me pray, and we will get right into yeah. your vocabulary. Again, it's only five words this week. Oh, we're just so thankful, Father, for this, this opportunity to gather once again in your name and talk about your hidden things and your word and your codes and what you have planned for us, Father. We trust in you and we honor you in your name and what you have for us, Abba. And we just ask that you dwell with us tonight, that you would uh, uh, reveal yourself in a mighty way in your word, but you would always also keep us protected from the enemy, that you would uh, station your angels round about wherever we are and keep us protected in uh in your mighty name father we ask this in yeshua's name amen all right you guys let me go to google translate and we'll jump right into your vocabulary easy week this week with the vocabulary even though we're increasing the uh if you had noticed many of our, our vocabulary words so far have been three letters which is really simple it is it, it, you know you'd be surprised at, at the number of um, what you can say with, with a very sh a little amount of letters is very different than English, all right? Very first word, five letters. One of my favorite ones, one of my favorite words is otiot. We've talked about this word before. It has broad meanings. Ethics is one of them, otiot, but it also means letters and signs or a warning the root word to this is oat which i think we've already had as a uh a, a, a word oto let's put that up there again olive tav yod vav tav oto but the root of this is oat oat which is there's sita hallelujah the root word is oat, which is signal. So otio is the plural form of oat. And again, it, it depending on the context, it uh, the meaning changes. And it's the same thing in English, you guys, and, and I'm sure in other languages as well. Context is always, uh, uh, you know, important. So that's what you know what what the the meaning form of that word means, right? So otio is our word. The root word is oat. The next word is zophon, and that is a zadi, a pay, a vav, and a noon. Zophon. Now, here's another example, because zophon means north, right? Uh, and, and what was really cool about this word when I did a word study on this, because when it talks about the throne room of, of El, it is in the north, right? That word is zophon, but that word also means hidden. It also means hidden. It doesn't just mean north. Again, Google is not doing us any justice on, on that, but um, if you go and look at, the, at some entomology and some word dictionaries on zophon, it also means hidden. And it's also a word that the rabbis use in describing codes. When, it, when they talk about codes, if you, if you follow Rabbi Glazerson, a lot of times you'll hear him use that word zophon, right? Zophon and is the word. Zadi, pe, vav, nun is the word. Next word. This is also a word that's used in concerning codes. And that is sod. It is a samic. Samic, vav, dalid little light crazy here <laughs> summit vav dalid and it means hidden or secret you'll also hear 
the rabbi is talking about that word when concerning codes. Samik Vav Dalad. Next word, five letters. This is the word for codes, the actual word. It's it's phonetically spelled, and it is Kodim. It's a Kuf Vav Dalad Yod Mim. Kodim is the plural form of codes. Let's see here. Hold on. Got somebody trying to get in. Here we go. She's in. Now, the, the uh, singular form is code. Code is a singular form. Yeah, uh, or code. Jeremy, you got a question, brother? Um, your uh, your uh, Hebrew keyboard, where did you get that? This? The, the, yeah, the download. Where, I assume you downloaded it somewhere? No, 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 no. This is just Google Translate. This is Google oh. Translate. So when you get to Google Translate, if you and you come here, you can set it for Hebrew and to English. Or, and you see, I have mm -hmm. looking at some things in Hawaiian, so it's mm -hmm. got Hawaiian up here right now. Now, when you when you get get ready to use it, you go right here and turn the vert. See how I turned it on and off? Yeah. See that little keyboard right there. You can oh. turn it on and off right there. Uh, yeah. What's the keyboard in the uh, Taurus off? Then uh, I've seen you when you're going through. Very similar to this. It's very similar to this. Okay. I mean, it's exactly the same. It's, yeah. it's the same one. The, the, the font may be different, yeah. but it's the same one. Yeah. Okay. Uh, is that in the Torosoft program, or is that something separate? Yeah. No, that's in. It's in the program. Okay. And you'll I'll see find when it. you when you initially search a code, yeah, you'll, you're going to go up to the control bar and look for the the binoculars, just like I said in the videos. Yeah. And you hit that. It'll bring up a prompt. And you just you just do exactly what I what I've done in the videos. Okay. And I would recommend that you that you pick out one mm -hmm. and watch the video, get get the letters down and know the letters, you know, know that a vav is a vav and not a noon or something mm -hmm. like that. And so you misspell a word, right? Mm -hmm. And then mimic what I do in, in that in that video and get the get the muscle memory of of what I'm doing, right? And yeah. and trust me. I'm a visual person, a visual learner, and and if, if I can be shown something, and I can physically do it. I pick it up really, really quick, and so that's kind of how I'm, I'm, I uh, foresee you guys picking this up. Okay, so it's not difficult at all. So fourth word was code or codeine, also codes, and then the next word is the word for computer. Now this is an ancient word. We we see this word in the plain text in the story of Joseph. When um, he is made a governor over Egypt and he is calculating the grain and he is portioning it and, and giving it to the people and stuff. The word used there for, for calculating is this word here, which is a mem, het, shin, bet. This is the plain, this, this word appears in the plain text and it is literally what we use for modern day as computer. Mem, het. Shin bet. And that's our last word for this week. And uh, you guys got any questions before we move to Greg Braden? Good to see you, Sitha. We were just talking about you before you come in. We were hoping you made it home safe. Yes, I did. I returned on Thursday, but just dealing with jet lag. I had a really wonderful time. So it was nice. Very good. Very yeah. good. Awesome. We hope Paul makes it back well, okay, as well. All right. Thank so, you all for your prayers. Uh, Absolutely. The last, yeah. the last word. What calculating computer? What do you? How do you? Uh, can you repeat in in Hebrew the word? How to how to pronounce it? Yeah. What's the word? The last one. Calculating computer. You said. It's makshav. Is what it is. Makshav. Makshav. Yeah. The mem chet is a mach. Remember, a chet is a, a ch, so it's mach, mach, and then it, with the shin and the bet is shav. The, okay. the bet is not going to be a b sound at the end of this word. It's going to be a vav sound, right? It's going to be a v. So mach shav is the is the the word. I'm sorry, I thought I said that. <laughs> anyway, that's your five words for. Um, this week. So, 
I happened to pick this up here. I, you know, Greg Braden is somebody that's been on my heart and thoughts here recently in several months. He's been putting out every once in a while. He's talking about Bible codes. Now, if you don't know who Greg Braden is, Greg Braden is, is pretty much like a new ager guy. He is very prominent over in Gaia and, and in that area. But he's kind of unique in the sense is as what he does is, is a bridge between what I do and the people that follow him, because I'm sure he's got he's got some Christians and some Hebrews that are following what he does with the metaphysical and some of the other stuff like UFOs and things like that uh, in his research. But he has a fascination with the Bible codes. He lives not far from here in uh, West Palm Beach, really close to my, my rabbi friend, Jacob. And um, so I've been praying to y'all that he would make a connection here that I could have an uh, uh, um, an opportunity to speak with him and and maybe um, I don't know witness to him I don't know just an just an open door and an opportunity because um, to get this word out and, and what we're doing you guys and I'm trying to do this to make this field survive if people really want to see this go away uh, what we do is kind of kooky and um, you know some people scoff at it and um, you know I, I I'm at the brunt of a lot of jokes and made made fun of and things like that but um, it doesn't discourage me. I know it comes from ignorance and things like that. And, uh, you know, I'm very confident in what I've witnessed and what I've experienced in searching codes to know that this is a very holy thing. And this is something that is supernatural in, in a sense that the, the Bible is literally a book that lives and breathes. OK, and uh, that the father really communicates through his word. and He really reveals things before they happen. And he tells us that in his word, right? So he tells us, and then he does it at the same time. It's a book that confirms itself, in, in other words. Anyway, Greg Braden, I think, is on the precipice for a lot of truth. And, and I'm praying for him. Um, he's always, you know, pushing the envelope with some of the new age stuff. But, uh, you know, he has this fascination with... Um, Bible codes, and for me, all I need is a is a point of contact. And if I can, if I can get an audience with him, I think that I could, uh, you know, witness to him. So anyway, he said to me a really interesting thing in in this video he just put out like a month ago, and uh, I thought we would watch this together. In fact, talking about specifically the Torah code, the Torah is one of the most mysterious texts. Uh, spiritual religious texts that we have available to us today. Still a lot of controversy even over where it came from and how it originated. Scholars have yet to agree a hundred percent on where this text came from. There are some scholars, biblical scholars, that believe that Moses wrote the text as it was dictated to him. Others believe that Moses was handed the texts that he had on Mount Sinai when he was engulfed in the cloud and the fire and he heard the, the name of God and he heard the voice of God uh, that he was actually given the Torah and yet other scholars believe the Torah was an accumulation of texts that were written by humans over a period of time. When we look at copies of the Torah, modern Torahs that we have today and we look at these ancient copies very, very few discrepancies exist in the text. It is a very stable text. Uh, approximately 23 letters have been changed over those 3,200 years, and that is almost unheard of when you think of all the translations that's gone through. There was a, a rabbi called the Genius of Vilna. It was uh, Rabbi Elijah ben Solomon Salman. He was a Kabbalist. And he summed up what I'm saying to you beautifully. What he said, and these are his words, he said, the rule is that all that was, is, and will be until the end of time is included in the Torah from the first word to the last word, and not merely in the general sense, but as to the details of every species and each one individually and details of details of everything that happened to him from the day of his birth until the end. What mathematicians and what the scholars are saying is the Torah was originally received with no break in the sentences, with no punctuation. And you guys, that's one thing I've been trying to relay to you and, and convey to you 
that the, that the genius of Villeneuve it pointed out a really powerful um, thing about this, that everything that was, is, and will be is there, and, and details upon details of, of individuals and places and things and events are there. And this is what sets it apart from any other book on the planet. And I know that there are videos on YouTube that say, oh, you can find these things in Moby Dick. Well, you guys, Code Finder has Moby Dick in there and Gone with the Wind. There's, there's a couple of uh, 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 text in there that you can use as a monkey text to check and see if there are legitimate codes there or if there's random occurrence. So uh, he is absolutely 100% correct when he says that. Situation. Uh, it was received in the Hebrew language, uh, which is a language that does not use vowels. So it was a, uh, a document of consonants, uh, a one continuous string of 300, exactly, 304,805 characters. That number is important. So the original Torah was believed to have been received as one continuous string of information. Uh, 304,805 characters, not on a parchment, not in a book, not etched on the stone, big stone tablets that Charlton Heston is carrying down the side of Mount Sinai. Rather, it was etched into a mysterious stone that fit in the palm of the hand. If you can think of this stone as fitting into the, the palm of a hand, and if a high intelligence uh, truly was visiting Moses, who or whatever you believe that intelligence is. If you believe it was God, whatever you believe God to be, or if you believe it's a, a higher intelligence from a, another dimension or from another world, it would make sense that such a sacred and profound document, as you're going to see, would be uh, left in uh, something that would not be destroyed easily like a parchment would be. Now, in, uh, in 19, mid-1990s, 1994, a group of mathematicians under the, the guidance, the leadership of uh, Elihu Rips was the mathematician's name, published a theory uh, about the Torah. It was published in a peer-reviewed journal called Statistical Science. You can see volume nine. Uh, and here's a, a copy of the original paper, and it was under the, the title, Equidistant Letter Sequences in the Book of Genesis. Now, that sounds pretty benign. You say, well, what's that have to do with prophecy? The way this works is that there is a, a, a mathematical algorithm that allows mathematicians and statisticians to search the Torah for meaningful information, for patterns and sequences of words that show up beyond uh, what could be a chance beyond what could be a fluke. And what they're saying in the abstract, it's saying it's been noted that when the book of Genesis is written as two-dimensional arrays, that equidistant letter sequences, and I'm going to share with you what that is, spelling words often appear in close proximity. It says the effect is significant at the level of point zero 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 four. That means there's a very small probability that this is a fluke. One of the tests that was made was uh, a test of the names of historical rabbis. Uh, it was believed that if the Torah contained all, all that was, is, and will ever be, that the names of these rabbis should show up in the text. So a group of code specialists from the United States were invited to participate in this. These were code specialists from the intelligence agencies, NSA, CIA. And there were a, a group of historic rabbis and they went to search for their names to see if they were in fact in the Torah. Well, not only were the names in the Torah, it was mind boggling what else was in there. The names, uh, the dates of their birth, the dates of their death, the cities that they lived in, where they practiced their, uh, their tradition, the people that they practiced with. And what the experts said was our referees were baffled by this. The prior beliefs made them think that Genesis could not possibly contain meaningful references to modern day, or in this case, later day individuals. Yet when the authors carried out the additional analyses and the checks, uh, the effect persisted. The paper is this offered is thus offered to statistical science readers as a challenging puzzle. They're saying, we don't know why this is happening, but here's what's happening. 
All right. So how is it possible? Now, let me just say this in, in this caveat with this. He's He's been speaking about the, the Torah. Obviously, we have been searching the Tanakh and as you and, and even the Bashida, right? So as you guys have witnessed, it's not just in the Torah. Now, he is getting this information from rabbis. For some reason, the rabbis will only acknowledge codes from the Torah. They won't acknowledge codes like Isaiah 53 and all the other prophets and writings, things like that, or, or even, matter of fact, none of them have even paid attention to the Brit Hadashah, which is the Peshitta, right? They don't care about that. And that's why I said it's so, it's such an open territory. Nobody has really searched that, okay? But the rabbis only think that their codes or they only admit that there are codes in the uh, in the Torah. I believe that they know that there are codes elsewhere. Okay, uh, and you also know this. We've been seeing codes in all the prophets. Matter of fact, the only place that acknowledges that Kamala Harris will be president, not if, but when she will be president, is in the prophets. And if you're searching only in the Torah, you will not find it. Notice. Glazerson has not made any videos about who's going to win this next election, right? Because it's undetermined. You can't look at the same code tables from Donald Trump and determine he's going to have a second chance or a second term. I've told you guys that. It's really hard. I don't see anything there that indicates that he's going to be there a second time, right? But I have held off that it may be in the Peshitta because others have said it is there, right? I haven't witnessed it, but others have said it's there. With that being said, you know, the code we found or I found in the, the, the prophets clearly show that uh, at some point Kamala Harris will be president. Right. So this is one of the places where I disagree with him. Another place is when he starts talking about Michael Drosden's code on the on the atomic holocaust. He likes to attribute it to what happened in Japan. And that is limited to that. But uh, as you guys have seen from some of the codes I've done on Atomic Holocaust, it is not limited to that. It, it is absolutely connected to World War III, and multiple countries are involved. Korea, China, Iran, Saudi Arabia, um, Canada, the United States. You, I mean, many countries are encoded in that very same place that he's going to show you in this video. But he says it's only um, when we attacked Japan. So that's the only other disagreement I have with him. Possible. How is it possible that meaningful information could be of modern day events, what we would call prophecy, could be written into a book that was delivered to the people of the earth over 3,000 years ago in a fixed format? How could that information be in there 3,000 years ago? Who 3,000 years ago knew about the events of the modern world? Well. To answer that question, we've got to unlock these codes a little bit. So I'm going to move quickly because I, I want to honor your time. And I, I just want to give you a sense for how this works. The modern Hebrew alphabet that you see on your screen is uh, inside of the red box. It, for every letter in the Hebrew alphabet, there is a mathematic code, a number associated with that letter. Now, I want you to know that this is true of every alphabet known to exist on the face of the earth today. Every ancient alphabet, whether it's cuneiform or Sumerian or Egyptian hieroglyphs or uh, kanji, uh, Japanese kanji or Chinese letters, Greek, uh, the Greek alphabet, the Phoenician alphabet, uh, the English alphabet, every alphabet has always had a mysterious number associated with it. The number is constant, it never changes. The mystery is where did the number come from? And I talk about this in other programs, I won't do it here. Uh, where do those numbers come from? But the, the fact that each letter can be converted to a number makes the computer search much easier when it comes to searching the code, and that's the point. So for the Torah code, what happens is all of those 308,000 plus letters are converted into its number equivalent, all right? So you get this long uh, sequence of continuous numbers, no punctuation, no breaks between the sentences or anything like that, all right? And then this, this information 
the total of 304,805 numbers is arranged into a matrix, again, with no punctuation, no spaces, but here's the key. And if you are a mathematician, you're going to understand exactly what I'm saying here. This is not a fixed matrix of X and Y coordinates. It is a dynamic matrix that changes with the queries. Now this gets really- All right, do you guys understand what he just said? It's a dynamic, why is it dynamic? With the query, and he's talking about the access term. Here's why. It's because with each access term, those terms are gonna appear on different size cylinders, right? From really small cylinder to a really wide cylinder. Remember when we last week when we searched end of days and it had a really fat cylinder, which means the bottom of the, the the matrix was open. There was no letters there, remember? And we put a row skip on it to open it up. Right? We made we made the cylinder smaller and and it filled in that gap down at the bottom. You understand what we're talking about? So that means this the this numbers the, the, the numbers of, of letters from the scripture is like a, a um, double helix that goes around a cylinder. That's what we're looking at when we're looking at code program in, in a matrix. You guys, you follow what I'm saying? Everybody follow? I feel like I'm losing you. I feel like I need to have some kind of prop or something and show you exactly what I'm talking about. I always struggle to know the cylinder thing because I can't visualize it. You know, why is it a cylinder? Good question. I don't know why it's a cylinder. I just know that um, uh, Rabbi Rips, Eliyahu Rips, who we talking about in the beginning of this, who wrote the program, that's what he made the algorithm based on was a cylinder. And so all of our Query terms that he, he he calls it query terms. It's your access term. It gives you access to to the matrix, right? So it's like a it's like a combination in a lock, right? So it's like each letter is you know twenty two left and eleven right and three left and you know what I mean? Like a combination. You're opening a matrix. Well, so when I say the row is say sixty and the column is say seventy. Mm -hmm. Does that mean it only shows 60 rows and 70 columns of that cylinder? Is that what it means? You know, with CodeFinder, that's a, that's a good question. With Torosol, the, the number that it gives is the actual size of the cylinder, meaning you can count. So let's say the cylinder is 500. You could count five, count, just pick a line and count 500 letters and you'll come back to the same spot on that. Okay. Cylinder. Does that make sense? Yes. And on the next line, right? Yeah, on the next line, exactly. Okay. So, so every time it passes into the window of your matrix, it could be just, you know, it. Yah is the only one that decides what chapter and verses come through on that matrix. Does that make sense? Okay. I don't get to yes. choose that, you guys. You don't, other than putting a row skip on your table, that's the only manipulation you can do. And that's not really manipulating. You're just going one size down, one half size down on the cylinder because you do it by two or three. And it, and it just, you're looking at the same matrix, just smaller. And what it does is it fills in the gaps below and above if there is a, um, a, a margin. Now, if you've got a really small table, let's say 20, like, uh, you know, my, my table in, in Jeremiah says skip to 22 and, and Yeshua's table in um, Isaiah 53 is a skip of 20, right? You'll have a huge margin on both sides at that point, not top and bottom, but both sides. Everybody follow. That means that cylinder is very small. It's only 20 <laughs> letters. You can count 20 letters and it goes all the way around that cylinder. It comes right back around to the front side where you started and you're now on the next line underneath where you started everybody follow it's a it's a spiral right i'm following um i have a question about yes. and it's about um code finder since i'm kind of locked into that right now right. um and i have been playing around a little bit with the columns and rows but yeah what what do you know or what can you tell me about the wrap matrix wrapped okay the wrap, wrap matrix at skip because i don't okay. know what that means i changed okay. the number and it seems like it doesn't do anything right. to my okay. matrix so the thing with code finder is 
and 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 um, some of the purists in, in searching codes are d disagree with the fact that you can do this. What wrapped means is if you're you could look for really long terms. Okay, okay so um, the the Torah is three hundred and four eight hundred three hundred four thousand eight hundred five letters. The Tanakh is over a million. Okay, so we have a, a a set number of letters that we're searching, a million letters in the Tanakh, and there is a limit to the number of letters in an access term because we will run out of text. Does that make sense? Right? So what Code Finder does is it will allow you to wrap. In other words, it will stack the text again. So it I'm will... thinking about wrapping paper right now. Is it something like that? Like a two or a roll? Well, what it does is it, it, it is it goes around it goes around again. Yeah. It, it, right. it takes it doubles the text. So so it goes Genesis through, you know, let's say Malachi and then Genesis through Malachi again. And it's stacked on each other. So, so Jonathan, have... uh, going back to what you were saying, uh, I just want to close on that. So yes. you were saying that if the skip is 20, that means if you go 20 characters around, it comes back to the next line is it at the same point absolutely yeah yeah okay absolutely. yeah yep. i have to grasp mm -hmm. that okay that yep. makes sense i will you know the next class you guys i'll make sure i have a couple of props a couple of different size cylinders and my little um you know drawing board because i think the visual will be a little easier for you to grasp that concept um okay so you know so when he talks about the dynamic matrix that's what he's talking about you know we don't set that dynamic. We can go and look for e each one of those dynamics are set already. And they're not infinite because of the number of t of letters we're searching. It does have a maximum and a minimum, right? And if you want to go beyond that, that's when you are using a wrapped text in Code Finder where it, it, it uses the text again. And so the purists say that's, that's not really, um, you, you, you know, kosher to do that. Even though they find really long codes in that, I'm not saying it's not possible because we can't put God in a box, right? You know, you know, uh, I've done that before, and He's blown my mind. But um, some of the purists say that's not that's not a, a thing that we should do. Uh, did somebody just ask a question? Yeah, like a double helix. Yes, in the Leanna. DNA. Leanna, do you have a question? Yes, I do. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, when uh, Sister Maria was asking about the wrapping, mm -hmm. I'm wondering if when when you're when you're doing a code and it's you've got a long word mm -hmm. like America, for instance, right? America or American, mm -hmm. and it you've got three letters that are that you can see, and then you see two or three more letters up a line higher. Is that what wrapping is? You know where it's not in a straight line, uh, like you have four letters of a word in a straight line that are equally distant, and then you have the additional letters to that word up a little higher or down a little lower. Is that a wrap? Um, I'm I'm having a hard time visualizing what you what you're saying, but I, I, it seems like it. Extension was what I, you're talking about, Leanna. It seems like it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I mean, because I had a code that had two words on it, uh, that one was American and one was election, mm -hmm. and it had it had the numbers, uh, the letters were not on the same line, and they but but they looked like they were equally spaced, but they were continuations of a word, you know. So I was absolutely just yeah. That's, about so that, that means you got you got it have. you got it at an angle or something like that. Even if they're not horizontal in the same line, yeah, you can have words that are going at all different angles as long as they're equally lettered space. Mm -hmm. That's what ELS means: equal letter distance skip. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's thank go you. Back to, any more questions before we go back to Greg? All right. So I just wanted to address that: what a dynamic matrix means. So he's right about that. That this this thing it, it, it's like it, it's alive, right? So and it's almost as if it's infinite with its information. Really, really, very sophisticated, very interesting. 
Okay, it is arranged initially into a matrix of 64 rows, 4,772 numbers each. 64 rows, 4,772 characters each. And then what happens is each time a query is made, the results of that query reposition the rest of the matrix to reflect the impact of that query. This is a dynamic matrix. This is so sophisticated. Uh, it only works with the Torah. Uh, the researchers tried uh, popular books uh, of war and peace, big books of war and peace, Moby, uh, Moby Dick. Uh, they tried the, the phone books. Back in the old days, we used to have printed telephone books. And what I'm going to share with you only works with the first five books of the Christian Bible and the, and the, the Hebrew Bible, the Torah this dynamic multi-dimensional matrix. So once this matrix, this dynamic matrix is in place, it's in the computer, then there are very complex algorithms that will search for patterns. And they will do so using what are called ELS sequences, equidistant letter search sequences or ELS algorithms. These are very, very cool. Rabbis used to do this manually, and it said that it made them crazy. There are rabbis that literally went crazy doing this with a quill pen and, and parchment, but they knew the codes were in there before computers were ever developed. So what is an ELS code? It's also called a skip code, and that's the way I'm going to refer to it. A skip code is a number that identifies how many space, how many letters you will pass over before you grab one of the letters in uh, in the matrix. So you begin with a letter and then the skip code tells you how many letters you will go until you grab the next letter and how many letters you'll go until you grab the next letter. So for example, a skip code of 10, you would begin with the letter that you've chosen and then you would go 10 letters and grab that letter, 10 more letters and grab that letter to determine the sequence. And those letters uh, would, if it was the correct skip code, it would give you, it would reveal a meaningful message coming from uh, the biblical text. So let me give you an example, and this is an example that rabbis have known for a long time. They, they originally discovered this manually, and it's in the book of Genesis that the, the name of the Torah is actually encoded into the book of Genesis using a skip code of 50. So remember, Genesis is the first book of the Torah. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. So the way this works is the first T, uh, so the top line that you're seeing on your screen is read from your right to your left. This is the way that, that the Hebrew is, uh, is read. There are no vowels. Specifically, there are uh, vowels that are implied. All right, so there will be no O because O is a vowel. So the first T that we see from that T, if we use a skip code of 50 and you go to the left, there's no, there, there are no other T's. And then you go to the right and you begin on the second lot level. And the, on the 50th letter, there is the O. And then you do the same thing again. You go 50 more and there's the R. You go 50 more and there's the H. Remember, there is no, no O because uh, it is a vowel. So using a skip code of 50, the word Torah shows up in, uh, in the book of Genesis, early in the book of Genesis. There are very complex algorithms that are used to do this and computer programs. And right now, to the best of my knowledge, those programs are only working on PCs. They're not made for the Mac. There is a way that you can... Uh, you can use software on the Mac to make the Mac look like uh, a PC. And then you can run the code under that. It's a little complex to do that. But I want to give you an example. What you're seeing is a screenshot of some of those uh, search algorithms on the actual Torah code. And what you're seeing, and the, the only reason I'm, we're not going to read this, we'll, we'll read some other ones, but what I want you to see, and what I want you to see here, is that the codes can be vertical. They can go top to bottom, bottom to top, the search. It can go left to right, right to left, and it can also go diagonally. And what happens is when a meaningful letter sequence or a phrase or a word is found 
within a certain distance of another word it is called statistically significant you know i mean if it's you know like you know hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of letters it probably doesn't mean much but when these words are in close proximity or when they actually cross one another and you'll see this this is where the messages begin to appear now this whole concept was was made popular brought to the public attention in the mid 90s uh, specifically and then with a book in 97 by uh, a, a man a journalist named michael drosnan sadly Michael Drosnan has passed, so he is no longer involved in this, but it is through his journalism that he published this first book called The Bible Code, and I believe four, uh, four other books following uh, Bible Code 1, 2, 3, and, and 4 to bring us up to date on what was happening in the world. And the, the way that he did it was very profound because in the Bible Code, there was... Uh, uh, a series of sequences saying that the Israeli prime minister at the time in the 90s would be assassinated. Now, some of you I know uh, have not learned about this in school. Others of you weren't alive when this was happening. So I'll, I'll just go over this very briefly as an example. And then we'll use this example to go through other uh, queries very, very quickly once you understand how this works. So the Israeli prime minister uh, between 1983 and 1995, his name was Yitzhak Rabin. He was a man of peace. And he, if you know him, or if his name is familiar, you may remember uh, that he worked with, uh, under the, the guidance of Bill Clinton. When Bill Clinton was our president, uh, Bill Clinton was the one that got Yasser Arafat, the uh, the Palestinian, the leader of the Palestinians on the right-hand side, and uh, Yitzhak Rabin, the Israeli prime minister on the left, he got them together for the, the peace accords. They were called the, I believe is the Oslo Peace Accords, where the two men in principle agreed to create a peace. This is the closest we've ever come to peace between these two, um, these two factions that are our brothers and sisters in blood. And, uh, and they truly are. They have the same heritage. And this is the closest we ever came. There were people that did not want that peace to happen. And one of those uh, individuals was a man that, uh, that assassinated Yitzhak Rabin, Rabin, and he did it on November 5th, 1995. The reason I'm sharing this is because the Bible code said that when, when the query was made, uh, Michael Drosnan was working with the mathematicians and they saw the assassination November 5th, 1995. And they warned Yitzhak Rabin that this would happen. He listened to their warnings and he believed in the Torah code. And he said, if it's in the code, then it's meant to be. And I'm not going to change my plans. I'm paraphrasing. He went forward with... Um, I just want to, I just noticed this. November 5th is also the election that's coming up so uh if you don't know this code that that was produced this is this is why i got into code searching is my my, my um my stepfather my mother's husband was an agnostic and he was reading michael draws in book and he, he'd heard about this uh in, in written in that book and and this was the first code that ever predicted anything and this is how we got the idea that everything that was and is and it will be is indeed there because he had found something before it happened. Um, so it's been well known for a long time, even though it's not been in, in the forefront. And even some code searchers who, who have been out there have made really wild predictions and kind of hurt the credibility of, of the codes. It, and though it's not a crystal ball, you guys, it is very much like an ephod where the the Holy Spirit can reveal things to you before um, it happens. So this is the very first code where we understood that. Uh, his day, as he had planned his day, and the man that was identified in the Torah at the time of day that was identified in the Torah on the street that was identified in the Torah, uh, in fact, took the life of Prime Minister Yitzhak Rabin. That was what brought the Bible code into the headlines, uh, that the fact that it so accurately described this event. So what I'm sharing with you here, uh, uh, this is a highlight, and I'm going to go to a computer screen. What you're seeing here is a portion.
Now, you guys, this is what I what I said when I was when I was showing you guys about the Donald Trump table and assassin will assassinate in this really close proximity to Donald Trump's name. And I made mention of this table right here that that the last time I'd seen something so convinced. And this is why in the video I did six years ago, I was so distraught because of this, because when, when you see that kind of proximity and and things are really close together. Watch out because it has a significant meaning. All the, you know, especially when they're vertical terms that are stacked on each other, you know, um, close together or even in the same matrix. The, the vertical terms will have a direct relation, you guys, um, in a lot of cases. And uh, usually we'll be interacting with the plain text like this. This is his name, Yixok Rabin. And this is what it says in the plain text that, um, you know, he will be. He would be assassinated. It, uh, this is a story where where there was an assassin that was, you know, going in after someone and killing somebody uh, in the in the plain text. Portion of the Torah matrix. All right, Yitzhak Rabin is in the red. I just want you to see how uh, how these codes are revealed. Is in the red, so you see him vertically and crossing him. It's not even it's nearby. It's crossing him. Assassin who will assassinate actually crosses his name. Now, the bigger picture, there's a lot more information, and I want to share this with you. Here is the screenshot. And uh, they're using geometric forms to highlight the different words. So in, in the circles, the name of Yitzhak Rabin is on a diagonal, and you see that. The name of the assassin who will assassinate crosses him. So it says an assassin will assassinate, and it crosses his name. The assassin's name is in the uh, the truncated. Now look at that. Now you see why why I just said what I just said. Name of assassin who will assassinate. That's the same thing it says in Donald Trump's table. Name of assassin who will assassinate. Right. It doesn't say the name. It just implies there's an assassin. And by the way, you're not called an assassin unless you kill somebody. Right. If you try to kill somebody, they call you an attempted murderer not a murderer you understand what i'm saying he actually killed somebody in this event so therefore he is a an assassin right that's the that's the very text that was in well the ver uh, the, the anomaly the vertical anomaly that was in donald trump's table the only difference is this is in a plain text that's the only difference this man was killed so six years ago when i'm looking at donald trump's table and i'm looking at the same information my thoughts was this man is good as dead, and it it disturbed me. And I and and so when I watched the the gunshot to his head, when he hit the ground, my heart sank to my to my feet, and I felt like I just witnessed another president assassin, just like JFK. It was shocking to my system. And then when he got back up, it was like it, my brain had to reset, and I was like, "What what, what just happened? Was was there a gun? Was that an actually a gunshot? What, what just happened? Right?" It was so surreal, but it was because of this code and what, what was seen in his that led me to believe there was an urgency um, to, you know, what we eventually would see play out on TV. It took six, six years, but uh, it, at the time that, that I was looking at it, it was very profound to me. The pyramid in the upper left, uh, the name and his name that says his name and his name is on that same line to the right. His name is Amir. And in fact, Amir is the name of the assassin that took Yitzhak Rabin's life. So the question is, how could that information have been in a 3,000 year old text? Well, what the, the scientists did, they said, what if Yitzhak Rabin had postponed his tour that day, he was on a, uh, he was doing a, essentially a parade. What if he'd postponed that parade? So they entered the query into the Bible code and it still said, name of assassin who will assassinate, name of the assassin was Amir Yitzhak Rabin, but then it says assassination delayed. So if Yitzhak Rabin had postponed, he would have lived that day perhaps uh, not on uh, to another day because it said assassination was delayed. So these are the kinds of things 
that are showing up. And then the scholars began to go back and look in history and see what else could possibly be in this Bible code, in this Torah code. And the answer is everything. Everything. Any, any event that you put in there is going to show up. These are major events. Here you see the, the atomic holocaust in Hiroshima. And the circles, vertically, you see atomic holocaust. The triangles, you see Japan. The year is in the squares, crosses the atomic holocaust. It is the Hebrew year 5705, which translates into the Julian year, or the Christian year 1945. So 1945 actually crosses, and this is the only place this happens in the Bible code. There is nowhere, when all the queries are run, there is nowhere that says that this will happen as it did. During the Cold War years, there was a, a potential in the mid-1980s, and all the queries have been run since that time. Nowhere does it say nuclear holocaust, atomic holocaust, so I'm saying this because many people are concerned that we're going to have an all-out global war with mushroom clouds on every horizon. And I'm not saying that we couldn't have a limited nuclear exchange. I hope not. Um, I hope and I believe that cooler heads will prevail. But if that happened, that is not an all-out holocaust. That would be uh, a, a limited, it's called the tac tactical nuclear exchange. It's a horrible it's a horrible term that has been coined in military circles. There are what are called tactical nuclear weapons designed to be used on the battlefield, uh, much smaller in scale than what happened in, in Hiroshima. Uh, very sad uh, that anyone would even put the time and energy into developing a weapon like that called a tactical nuke. So that's my personal feeling. It's not my science. So this is, this is how this works. And they began looking at other things. John F. Kennedy, the assassination of President John Kennedy. Here his name is in circles uh, vertically. Uh, to die is actually in the same circle. The city of Dallas where he was assassinated is in there. So let's take a look at that, you guys. You, you, see, uh, you see what he's saying? You got, the President Kennedy is in the circle. So, so President Kennedy in a circle. And then in the square to die. So in the same column, you got Kennedy to die. Does everybody see that? And then in Dallas. Yeah, Jeremy, you got a question. Uh, yeah, in the in the previous code there about the 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 uh, Japan. Yeah. I I haven't seen a a, a radial pattern like that where they pulled the name Japan out of. Like a flower, and I can see the the why they would uh, use that given the the significance of the uh, the uh, the flower in 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 um was it the chrysanthemum chrysanthemum flower yeah in uh, Japanese iconography, but um, I haven't seen that often. Is that something that a lot of times you will see in code tables where words will make a design. And uh, there was even a guy on YouTube. I don't think he was doing codes. I think he was seeing patterns in people's codes and he, he was pointing it out. Um, like, you know, code tables on the twin towers, how there would be vertical anomalies and it would be kind of, you know, offset a little bit and, um, you know, a few other things. So, so, um, they do produce patterns. Uh, that particular access term is not just about Japan. And that was what I was saying earlier. Another thing that I disagreed with uh, Greg on this was um, we do have a threat of, of nuclear war. That is not, it, it, a matter of fact, it's gotten, it's, it's gotten even worse. And, and when we go into this, uh, in the last video I did, I, I talked about the next three years are going to be very difficult. And it's because the codes indicate this is a high probability time where you know, we're going to see that kind of warfare in, in the world. So uh, I, I believe he's wrong about that. That particular table also has information about current events and what we're seeing now and also indicates that it, this is more broader than just what happened at Japan um, and grows into something larger. So, um, you know, again, he has a fascination with the codes. He's not an expert in, in the codes. And so, so you know, um, we got to keep that in mind.
Uh, and it goes on in more detail in other codes. It tells the name of the assassin, the street, the time of day, how it happened. Here it is. Uh, name of the assassin is Oswald. You're seeing in the diagram. I forgot that I put this in there. Uh, Oswald is uh, in the, the circles. He was a marksman. You see that in the, the diamonds. Name of the assassin who will assassinate. Very similar to what you saw with Yitzhak Rabin. 9-11. Uh, before it happened, and this is this is really amazing. Here you see the twin towers vertically in the center in the circles. It knocked down in a truncated, um, it's almost like a trapezoid that you see twice. It happened two times. Airplane is in there, and in a more detailed, uh, more detailed query, you actually see the name of Bin Laden is in the green on the right hand side of. of okay, so perfect example. Imagine that the three towers that fell, right, is represented by the three anomalies there. Does that make sense? So, so, so and, and it's just like it, it was. Two tall ones and one shorter one. Does everybody see that? So that's kind of like a, a and I forgot the term that the guy used, um, pictograph. He called it a pictograph is what he called it. Of the code there, uh, attack, thousands die. So you get the sense for how this works. It, not only bad things, a lot of good things. The uh, Torah codes described Obama's election. Here they say Barack Obama. Uh, the, they give his name. His name is spelled out in blue in Hebrew. Uh, he's president, and you see that in the Pentagons. Uh, Barack, his name is on there. Islamic affiliations, his name is on, is in there, in the USA, is all in there, okay? So I'm going to make a point here because the Bible code doesn't predict, and I want to be really clear, and I'll, you'll hear me say this again, it doesn't predict if you know what to ask, it will reveal the relationships, but it is not predicting what will happen. So when the queries were made in hindsight, it was easy to, to choose the words and the keywords. So it's, it's kind of like a search algorithm in Google. You know that... He is right up to a point, you guys. This is not a crystal ball. It does not predict the future. It is very much like the ephod. Now, what does that mean? That means you're getting information fr from the Father, an outside source, outside of the code, outside of you, and you get that thought and that, that input to look for something and then it's there. Does that make sense? Because not everything you look for is going to be there. But there are times where you'll hear the Holy Spirit say, go go here and go there. Or you'll get inspired to go look for something. And you'll find it. Right? That's that, And sometimes those codes are predictive. Right? For instance, finding the stuff I found about Kamala. And the things I found about Trump and Biden. And, and Obama, every time that a, uh, an election happened, I was able to determine who it was going to be before it happened. How was that? Because of what I was seeing in the codes, right? And it was in, in it, the Holy Spirit leads you to that. Does that make sense, you guys? It, 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 out, if you don't have the Holy Spirit leading you, you're not going to find codes. Is, is that, does that make sense? It's going to, for instance, you know, a wicked, I think the Father does that for on purpose. If you're a wicked person, this is not going to work for you. Matter of fact, it might cause a lot of grief for you, for to even a like strange fire, bringing strange fire to the to the temple. Follow, right? It's not going to work. So, there is that. He's right about it. You cannot use it to predict the future. But Yah will reveal things before they happen. This is how you know it's Him that's showing it to you. He says that in his word. Uh, you get pretty good at refining the kinds of, of keywords to help you better find what you're looking for in Google. In this software, the, the way that the, the queries are entered uh, in hindsight can help us to know what the, the code knew about all of this. But the thing is, you have to ask the question. It's not predicting blanket you know, these things are going to happen. You've got to know what question to ask, number one. Number two, the query must be made in the Hebrew language because it is being queried against the Torah. Now, there are ways to translate 
English into Hebrew so that you can make the query into Hebrew. But, but the algorithm has to have a query in, in the Hebrew language. Now, the reason I'm, I'm going through all of this is the point I'm going to make right here. Because the Bible code always tells us that we always have a choice. Our fate is never sealed unless we choose to seal our fate. We are never destined to a dark outcome unless we choose that outcome because any choice that we make prior to that outcome creates the bifurcation that takes us onto a different path, onto a different timeline, thus avoiding those outcomes. Here's a perfect example of what I'm going to say here. In the year 2000, there was a threat of a nuclear annihilation for Israel. It's being made by some of Israel's enemies. So the, the Hebrew year 5760, the uh, Julian year 2000, Holocaust of Israel, it says it was delayed. Look at this. In the year 1996, the same thing. It says, will you change it? Right there. And I highlighted this in red. And you will find this frequently in the Torah codes, in a, a place near the most frightening the most frightening statements that are in there, uh, nuclear holocaust, uh, atomic, atomic holocaust, for example, like you're seeing here. Will you change it? The code itself is telling us that we always have a choice. The key is we must act upon our choice. We must make the choice of peace. We must make the choice to avoid the darkest scenarios that uh, are, are depicted in these codes, and that is true of any prophecy. The Hopi prophecy tells the same thing. The Incan prophecy tells us the same thing. Tibetan prophecies tell us the same thing. All they can tell us is what may happen if nothing changes. They're looking at probabilities in time and space as we embrace our power, our power to choose our power to influence these quantum realities. By doing that as individuals and by doing it collectively, we are shifting those timelines to avoid those darkest, those darkest moments. And as I said, uh, unless something has changed, all of the Torah codes that from the, the experts that I've seen, that I've worked with, and I've been a student of this, I've studied this since the 90s myself. We've done whole workshops on this. I do not see anything in there about a nuclear holocaust or atomic holocaust beyond uh, the end of the Cold War. So of all the things you have to worry about, and there are a lot of things out there, maybe that one can have a little less priority for so, you. Uh, the thing about um, Greg Baden is <laughs> he's very optimistic, okay, and he doesn't want to talk about those things, but... And listen, I, if it wasn't there, I'd tell you the same thing. Do you think I'd want to just tell people that that, that is a very high, highly probable thing that's going to happen? No, it's horrible. You don't want to tell people that. My mom don't want to watch my videos because I've been talking about these things that are going to happen, right? Um, she doesn't want to talk about those things, and she don't want to think about those things. That's the attitude of most people. Don't talk about those things, right? The fact is, the Bible tells us, and in the prophet Zechariah talks about specifically um, nuclear weapons and, and, you know, people standing and their, their eyes melt in their sockets and their tongues in their mouth and they're vaporized and stuff. That is a nuclear blast. And it doesn't just happen in, in World War II, you guys. This is one of the judgments against America. And, and Yah has been showing me this. There's at least two strikes and if y'all judges us for iniquity it's going to be 14 in this country and i pray against that i pray it's only measure for measure and not iniquity but it's coming and i'm not the only one that sees that henry groover pre preached that um what was the russian um uh, preacher's name oh my gosh dimitri dudeman said the same thing and many others, right? So, so there is coming an attack one day. This is the, the, the part of the, the threshing and the humbling of America. And the reason why we don't see America saving Israel when Israel comes under attack. Do you ever wonder why that is in the, in the, in the text? 
that we see that we don't see America coming in saving the day when it comes to Israel in, in the text talking about Gog and Magog and the Megiddo. We don't see it. Why? Because she's removed already. She can't intervene. So it is coming. I disagree with him on that. I love the guy. I want to make connections with him and, and discuss these things further. But I've got to tell you the truth, you guys. Being in the codes this this long and, and researching those things, it is a very real threat. That is not to be taken lightly. I want you to know that you're in the Torah code because everyone is. Every name of every person that's ever been entered is in the Torah code. The city that you're born, where you live your life, uh, who, who your partners are in life, it's all in there. And you say, how can that be? How can that possibly be? And the answer to that, it's a deep mystery. It goes back to what Einstein said uh, early on, is that the past, present, and future all exist simultaneously. So somehow, three over 3,000 years ago, and this is the way as a scientist I choose to think of this, you've seen me talk in past programs about the very real possibility that we are living in a simulated reality or a virtual reality, that we are living a simulation, learning something about ourselves learning about the power of love, learning about the power of human emotion, learning about the power of good and evil. And I say that because those are the dominant themes playing out in our world. The ancient theme of good and evil has been playing out since the beginning. The power of love to transcend hate and to transcend our hurt and heal, and the power of human emotion to elicit that love. Those are all factors uh, that I personally believe are, are dominant factors. If we're learning anything, in uh, a simulated world, I believe this is what we're learning. Now, the Bible code itself says that the code cannot be understood until what is called the end of time. Not the end of the world, not the end of the world like so many people thought 2012 was. 2012 wasn't the end of the world. We're not living the end of the world now. We may be living the end of a certain kind of time and moving into a, a different kind of time, a new kind of time. What the Bible code says very clearly is that we will only be able to read the code in the, at the end of time when computers, and the word computer is in the code, when computers can unlock the codes. This comes from the book of Daniel, actually, is where this is. So the information in the Bible code was shut up and the words were sealed until the end of time. And it's at the end of time, and look at the, in the circles, computer, the word computer actually crosses to shut up the words and seal the book until the end, you can't see it's cut off here, but the end of time, all right? So there's one of your, your vocabulary words, you guys, mem, chet, shin, bet, right there. Machshav, you see it right there? Now, this is really interesting. This is a really cool study. Um, uh, you know, if you know anything about Isaac Newton, he he, uh, he had a fascination with Bible codes. He taught himself Hebrew specifically so he could search for codes. And you know what book he had an interest for? Daniel. And the other one was um, the book of Revelation. The reason for that is Daniel is a very highly coded book. OK, and, and very cryptic in the way that Daniel speaks and speaks a lot about Bible codes that, you know, some people even believe that Daniel was, was responsible because he was in Babylon at this time. And there was a different way of writing Hebrew. It was Paleo Hebrew. And then it switched to what we see now with this font here, which is called the Babylonian flame letter. OK, some people think that when he did that, that he sealed up the book until the end when computers were made available and now we can search and we can break these codes. That's fascinating to me. So we now have the computers. We are living according to the Mayan tradition. So see, see the direct connection of computer and to shut up the words and seal the book until the end. This is why we think that. And by the way, the word codes is also coded here the end of one cycle of time and the beginning of a new cycle. 
Time may mean something different to us. Our, our world is changing. Our world may mean something different. But it's only now that we have the wisdom to understand the algorithms, to create those algorithms, and we have the machines to run those algorithms against the code. The book of Daniel says it's only now that we can read this because it's been shut up and sealed for our protection up until this time. Now our computers, our high-speed computers, are allowing us to go through all of these possibilities. So the Torah is a quantum map of all possibilities. Now I want to be really clear on this. Scientists believe that we have an incomplete understanding of the Torah code. The reason they believe that is because the information appears fragmented. All right, and you saw that. You've got a piece here that crosses a piece here. They're not contiguous sentences. So we are still unraveling the mystery of the Torah code. So what I want to say, and I want you to hear this very, very clearly, uh, that what the, the Bible code, the Torah code is saying, it does not predict a precise outcome. It can tell you of outcomes that have occurred. It doesn't predict. It can give you only potential outcomes, only possibilities. The key is you've got to know what question to ask for the query to reveal the interconnected relationships. Okay, you have to so know on that are. note, on that note, it doesn't predict precise outcomes. It identifies range of potential outcomes, probabilities, right? Um, let's talk about Monte Carlo method. Let's say um, the Pope quits tomorrow and they're going to elect a new Pope. Well, th theoretically, we're going to have a pool of 70 names. One of those names is going to be the new pope. So theoretically, by a process of elimination and by going through every rabbit hole of searching each one of those names, eventually we can determine which would be the next pope. Does everybody follow me? That's called Monte Carlo method. When you search every possibility to determine the highest probability of, of what was going to happen. Does everybody follow what I'm saying? When you have an election like what we're going to see, and we get to this point where we have two people, set aside everything that we've already you know, talked about, Biden dropping out, Kamala running to the front, yada, yada, yada. Once you've got two candidates, it's, it's, it's either or, right? What? And by the way, the Bible says it's the father who raises up kings and takes down kings, so it doesn't really come down to the vote, stolen or not stolen. Whatever his will is, that's what's going to happen, okay? But for the sake of searching codes, it is theoretically possible, and I think probably proven at this point, but I'll still say theoretical, that you could go through both rabbit holes and determine what the outcome was going to be. So I I, I agree with him to a point, but there, there's, you know, um, I think because I've had tenure in doing, doing this that I see things a little differently than, than he does. Those connections are. <clears throat> and the queries have to be, as I mentioned, in, uh, in the Hebrew language. So I personally uh, am in awe of the, the code itself. I'm in awe of the mathematicians and the statisticians that have designed the algorithms that are able to even begin to make sense of this code. I'm in awe that we have in our possession on this planet a mysterious artifact that was revealed to us over 3,000 years ago that may hold the map of all possibilities on the quantum level if we are, in fact, living in a quantum simulation. It makes sense. If this is a virtual reality, if this is a simulation, and as I mentioned in the other programs, the recent algorithms uh, tell us that the odds are better that we all right so you know i don't know about quantum this and that and living in a simulation i believe the bible and and again greg braden is comes from you know new age um you know the if you know anything about gaia the the gaia organization he's one of the head guys over there they're all into ufos into metaphysics and and things like that and um you, you know I think he's a he's a bridge in in some respects because I do believe he believes in a in a god, but I think he's he's sort of like my stepfather was when he was searching for a creator. My 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 stepfather was an agnostic, 
and he was searching for God right before he died. And that's how he came across Michael Draws, and he, he heard about these Bible codes, and he read the books, and he, and he actually gave them to me and asked me to read them and tell him what I thought. And, you know, I was a young man at that time. I was in my 20s, probably. I was, uh, you know, ma newly married, and uh, I was fascinated. And, uh, you know, it, it never left my, my thoughts. I would always think about it. But for him, you know, he was searching, searching for a creator. And that's kind of what I, how I feel about Greg is that he's in that place where he's searching for, you know, what's real, what's not, what's, what can I grasp to, right? Anyway, he doesn't live far from me. Uh, I, I wanted to reach out with him and maybe have a conversation, uh, talk about codes, maybe collaborate or something like that. And, uh, you know, we praying if it's y'all's will that he would make, make that happen. So anyway, um, interesting presentation that he had several, Several uh, interesting codes, most of them from Michael Drazen, uh, of all people. <laughs> he didn't produce any of, of, of any of the rabbis, but that's that's OK. Uh, no, he did. The the uh, the 9-11 ones that Michael Drazen didn't find those 9-11 ones. That was the rabbis that found that. And they found it the day of the event. It wasn't something that was found before. So any questions or comments, you guys? No comments. You guys have any uh, codes you want to share before we close for tonight? No? Okay. Uh, and I see Paul still hasn't come back, and uh, we'll still be praying for him. So Jonathan? Day. Yes. So when you're doing those codes, when it says the query, it, you're asking a question. Are you, is, are you using, like, one word, like, say, Kamala, and then you might say, you know, harlot or something like that just to see if that word is there or is it a complete well, sentence well you know what he what he did what he was saying was a little bit misleading you can ask a question like for instance i i put i searched for who is the restrainer right and that isn't a, a term you can search who is the restrainer where you're literally asking a question now you can do that and it and it may or may not be there Right. So you, you may get frustrated looking for all these things that you you're wanting to ask and you're sitting there asking questions. Uh, don't get hung up in doing that. Right. Because things are not only encoded as a question. Sometimes it's just a statement or it's just, you know, a long sentence or something like that. Um, you, know, you know, I found an extension on the Kamala or the president in 2024 table about Kamala has and so to the blood as an extension on that i don't know what it means it doesn't make any sense it doesn't really go in line with you know president in 2024 and so to the blood it doesn't make any sense but it's there and i kept it what because it, of where it was encoded sitting right on top of jezebel and this is you know jonathan uh, what yeah, did it say about yeah. the blood my hearing is so bad it says and to the blood oh and to the blood and to the blood like it you know, and I may want to look at some of the letters after that because it may just continue. But um, the the I, I went with the skip patterning of president in 2024. And, and so once that's established and, and you can look for extensions, you guys, just by going to the next letter in the sequence. Right. Is everybody follow? And that's what I did. And that's how I found and to the blood there sitting on top of Jezebel in that. It may or may not mean anything, but it, it seemed like it did because, you know, of the context of some of the verses that were going through there, which was really about, you know, serving Molech and Ashtaroth and, and idol worship and killing babies and, and rebellion and all that kind of stuff was, was there. And to the blood. Hmm. And to the blood, yeah. That, uh, for some reason, it makes me think of the breath of the cup of wine you know what i mean it could be it could be because you know the woman that rides the beast that's in revelation she holds a cup and in the cup is is the blood in there right and she makes people drink of it, and it's a fornication right um exactly incidentally same thing with one of the hindu gods uh, goddesses she has a cup uh, a kali has a, a bowl or something that has blood in it it's the same kind of thing same imagery right so that's jezebel 
Jezebel is essentially the woman that rides the beast. Even though we know that's the Catholic Church and the imagery that's given, it, she's the harlot that le misleads the rest of the churches. Uh, but that's Jezebel. And that's why it says in Revelation, you know, come out of her, my people, and how long will you tolerate that witch Jezebel, right? So it, all that imagery is there. That That's, you know, remarkable to me because we're seeing that rise now with what we're seeing. Anyway. Thank you, Jonathan. Yes. All right, you guys. We are running right out to one hour and a half. If there's no codes and no more questions, I'm going to close this out and get this up loaded. And uh, no questions in the chat. Very good. Oh, Margie, I see that now. You, you're finding Kali and Shiva. And, yeah. Very good. Very good class, you guys. So no more questions. All right. Well, we will meet uh, same time next week. Um and uh, if there's any changes or anything, you guys m message me in Discord, and, and we'll go from there. So uh, thank you guys for hanging out with me tonight. Let me pray for you, and we'll see you next week. I'll be who I'm just so thankful, Father, for each one of these students. Father, I pray that you would go with them this week, that you uh, keep them protected, that you would nurture them in your word, that you would walk them with them in their journey, Father, and, and reveal yourself uh, every day to them, Father. Um, Keep them protected. Keep them healthy if they're sick in their body. Father, I pray that you would heal them. Father, bring them back at the appointed time. We ask this in Yeshua's name. Amen. All right. Shalom to you guys. I love you. We'll, we'll see you in Discord or in class. Thanks, John. Kill them.